When I was in college, I had to conduct a study for my anthropology class. Being the top tier student that I was, I decided that I wanted to have the best, most accurate anthropological study. So naturally, I grabbed a phone and the nearest microwave, stuck them together, and ended up here. Despite the fact that I had accidentally discovered the first instance of time travel, I was fascinated by the group in front of me. At the end of my study, the one major conclusion I came to is that this group all maimed the character Blade in Honkai Star Rail. And they said, Of five people, three must pay a price. And that's why you had to swipe for Blade while your friends did not. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to best build Blade, how he works, and if you should go for his light cone or Eidolons. And with all of that said, my name is Braxophone, and here's my guide to Blade. Destruction units have always been interesting with their tankiness playing into their kit, and Blade is no exception. Most of his kit has partial HP scaling, meaning that attack buffs aren't as effective on him, but at the same time, he's also less reliant on them. His entire playstyle also revolves around consuming his own HP to increase his multipliers. The difference between him and someone like Arlen, though, is that Blade actually does damage. His basic attack just deals damage scaling off of his attack, like most normal basic attacks, but by using his skill, you consume a skill point to enhance his basic attack for three turns. The enhanced basic attack then scales off a portion of Blade's attack and max HP stat and deals a lower portion of those same scalings to adjacent enemies as well. So basically, he deals a ton more damage after eating his own HP. This wouldn't be as good if he had to wait until the next turn to attack, but he actually doesn't end his turn after his skill, so you can immediately use your enhanced basic attack. Using his skill or his enhanced basic attack consumes HP though, and while you can run him with only a shielder and rely on some of his kit to help him survive, my preference and my personal best experience with him has been playing him with Locha for some automatic healing procs. One other thing to know about his skill is that it doesn't actually generate energy, but his enhanced basic attack will generate 30 energy, so he's still effectively getting the same energy return. His enhanced basic will not regenerate skill points, but it won't eat them either, so Blade goes minus one skill point every three turns, which is honestly pretty efficient for a damage dealer. Blade's talent and ultimate are the sustaining parts of his kit, and believe me, if he didn't have them, you'd spend a lot of time doing this. His talent makes it so that every time he takes damage or drains HP from himself, he gains one stack. And when he hits five stacks, he launches an AoE follow-up attack based on his attack and HP that hits all enemies. When it hits, he restores 25% of his max HP and starts from zero stacks again. His skill and enhanced basic attack both consume HP, so you get two stacks in one turn off of those in combination. And one of Blade's traces also increases his talent's follow-up attack damage, which is pretty good. Now, as for his ultimate, it sets his HP to 50% regardless of where it's currently at, so it can act as a heal in some cases, or it can just take HP and give him a stack, and it deals high wind damage based on his attack and max HP, as well as damage based on the HP that he's lost during the current battle. The extra damage is capped at 90% of his max HP, and resets after every ult use. So basically, the more damage he's taken, the more damage he does. Based on your blade's HP, that might not look like a ton, but it actually hits like a truck, especially when you consider that the ult also does additional cleave damage to adjacent enemies. Blade's damage is actually insane, and his kit doesn't really have any loose ends that need to be carried by other mechanics or characters. All you have to do is keep him alive, and his talent and ult can also help with that as well. His other traces increase healing received when he's at 50% HP or lower, and heal him a portion of his max HP after using his enhanced basic attack against a weakness broken enemy, which with Blade is actually not too difficult to do because he breaks a fair bit of wind toughness as well. And lastly, his technique outside of battle consumes some of his max HP and damages all enemies scaling on 40% of his max HP. Now I know I go over this every single video, but like the more we do it, the more useless it kind of feels. Blade's trace priority is kind of fake because you want to level them all up anyways, and it doesn't really matter which one you level up first. But if you're just here because you want someone to tell you what to do, then just start with his basic attack and skill, or you can pull for Kafka. Though Blade has a ton of text in his kit, he's actually not too complicated to play, and the same concepts apply to his best build. So next up, let's go over what relics he wants and what stats. With both 1.1 and 1.2 came a ton of new features, like a chat box that can let you interact with your friends via your phone. However, if you're like me and play Honkai Star Rail, you don't actually have any friends. So for now, let's put the declining social life on the back burner and focus on character builds. Because if you main blade, none of that bothers you anyways. One of the new things in 1.2 is a relic set that gives some HP on the two piece and crit rate on the four piece, assuming you take damage from an ally or yourself. 
For many characters, this set isn't going to be too strong, but for Blade, it is one of his best options since he primarily scales on HP and takes damage every single turn. He can get 100% uptime on the crit rate bonus, giving him 12% HP and 16% crit rate from the set. Now, if you combine that with his crit rate traces, you can also reliably get enough crit rate for the Rudolin Arena Planar Ornament set, which will give you a huge basic attack and skill damage bonus. To clarify, I don't mean just traces in this set, I just mean it's going to be pretty easy for you to get the 70% crit rate that you need. With that said though, since a large portion of Blade's damage comes from follow-up attacks and his ultimate, you can also opt for Inert Salsado. The better set honestly depends on how many enemies are on the field and how often Blade takes damage, and honestly either planar set will be fine if you have enough crit rate. So between these two, if you have either set already farmed, then use that set, and if you have both, just use the one with the better substats. And though I don't personally recommend this next set on him, you can also technically run Fleet of the Ageless for the HP bonus it gives, alongside the small attack bonus to your team. Now if you don't have his best in slot 4 piece set that we mentioned earlier, you can also opt for something like two pieces of Eagle of Twilight line. The Eagle set is not the highest damaging set for Blade, but because it gives wind damage, it can be a decent two piece option. And the new speed set, Messenger Traversing Hackerspace, also has a decent two piece stat to mix with other set options. So basically, you can go two piece wind damage, two piece speed, two piece HP, or four piece Longevous Disciple, which is going to be his best option most of the time. Now, for main stats, because Blade gets so much crit rate from his traces and sets, you'll likely end up using a crit damage body. For boots, you'll want to go with either speed or HP. Now, I personally prefer speed, but you can make an argument for either one. For his sphere, you want wind damage, and for his rope, you want HP to maximize his personal damage. He does have partial attack scaling on his abilities, but Blade's HP scaling is way more significant, so you want to focus on crit, HP, and speed substats over everything else. Now, I did want to mention that energy regen rope is an option that you have, but it's worth noting that in Blade's case, in order to ult every three turns instead of four, he'll need to use one follow-up attack, take damage from a big enemy, or KO another enemy. Depending on how many turns it takes you to actually beat the content, energy regen rope could be a decent option, but it's rarer than the other stats, and I'd still recommend HP for consistency, especially when you consider that you'll have more HP pieces and the substats on your HP pieces are going to be better. Once you have a completed Blade build, this guy hits like a truck, which is only fitting because I also wanted to be hit by a truck when I lost the 50-50. Now next up, let's go over his best light cones, which in all honesty are probably the biggest cons of him at the moment, so let's talk about those. I'm always really surprised how similar a fan base this is. So many people share common interests outside of Hoyiverse games. For example, if you main Kokomi or Yaimiko in Genshin Impact, you probably love K-pop. And if you main Blade in Honkai Star Rail, you love these guys and K-pop. Like how he limited your music taste based on how edgy your favorite character is, Blade's light cones are limited by his HP scaling. There aren't a ton of destruction light cones he gets a lot of value out of at the moment. And yes, he will have more options over time, and having a light cone is always better than none, but for now, there's basically only four light cones you even want to really consider. The unreachable side is his best in slot light cone option because it gives crit rate and max HP, and the base HP stat on it's pretty dang high. It also gives a damage bonus, and it's the top pick light cone for Blade. Genuinely, this light cone is so good for destruction characters. If you don't want to gamble for that light cone, the second light cone that I recommend is actually a four star, but also gotcha. A Secret Vow is an amazing pick for Blade that basically gives him a free 20 to 40% damage bonus, and if Blade is lower HP percentage than the enemy, an additional 20 to 40%. It also can have over 1k HP at max level, so it's a great choice for Blady. Outside of that, basically anything goes. If you have the five star from Herda Shop, then that one's also pretty decent. But I'll keep it real with you, almost all of these light cones are within a really small margin of each other. And basically all you're looking for, if you don't have a secret vow or his signature weapon, is for the highest HP and then, you know, you can look at attack and stuff afterwards. I recommend a signature, a secret vow, on the fall of an Aeon. If you have something irreplaceable, that's pretty good. If you don't have any of the top picks, it literally is just picking whichever one you already have built so you don't have to waste resources. <laughs> the reason I don't really recommend most other destruction light cones on Blade is because him primarily scales scaling on HP makes it so that attack bonuses and base attack from light cones are less valuable, and straight up damage bonus and crit on light cones becomes a lot better for him. Most destruction light cones give attack bonuses, and Blade doesn't really take as big advantage of them, so just because a light cone is a 5 star light cone doesn't mean it's actually going to always be good on Blade. With that said, any light cone that has a high HP stat is going to be decent on him, at least until we get more light cones that he can really benefit from. 
Overall, you can run a free-to-play blade setup, but you'll definitely see better results with a signature light cone or a secret vow. And again, because blade doesn't really scale well off of attack, you'll run into issues with attack scaling things, and the same sort of concept applies to his teams. So let's move on to blade teams, where I can tell you exactly who he synergizes best with, and the answers may actually surprise you. When it comes to building teams for Blady, there's actually not a ton of things that you have to worry about, but there are some general tips that I wanted to give you guys just so that way you have an easier time playing it. So the first thing to keep in mind when you're building Blade teams is that he's not like your stereotypical or your average carry characters. Characters like Sila benefit a lot from attack buffs. You can use her in conjunction with someone like Tingyun, and Sila gets a ton of value out of it. However, with Tingyun, she buffs your attack by a ton, but since Blade's damage isn't primarily scaling off of his attack stat, Tingyun's effect isn't actually going to be as helpful to him as it would be for someone like Zila. And this actually applies to all attack buffers. So Asta here, who buffs your whole team's attack, yes, your team's going to benefit from it, but Blade's not going to get as much value. Most of the value from Asta is going to be coming from speed. Now, the one thing to note about Tingyun, though, that can be helpful for Blade is the energy gain straight to his ult bank is pretty nice. And when she gives him that energy, she also gives him a damage bonus. And even though he's not fully attack scaling, he does get a lot of value from damage bonus. Any straight up damage bonus that comes to him, he can actually utilize fairly well. Well, so I don't necessarily recommend playing Tingyun with him because you can play Tingyun with any other character that can attack skill and she'll be pretty good. But that does lead me to the next character I want to talk about, which is actually Branya. Branya is a wind unit, Blade's a wind unit. So if you have to break some winds here, I'm actually a fucking middle schooler because I just cut the video because I said break wind and started laughing uncontrollably for a few minutes. Anyways, the thing about Branya is that her skill that she's going to be using a lot actually gives them a damage bonus. And this damage bonus is significantly more useful to him than an attack buff. Now, granted, Branya's ult does buff attack. And so you are losing a little bit of value on that. But because you can constantly give him a huge damage bonus, Branya is going to be one of his best partners. The other thing that I, I forgot to mention about Qingyun as well is that even though you can get his ult up sooner you want him to take more damage between each use of his ultimate so i don't particularly think that it's as helpful as some people might think but it is worth noting so where i was going with that is that brunya is going to be blade's best partner in the game right now until we get a character that just straight up increases a ton of max hp or can just throw some damage bonuses away for being low hp blade already trucks without a ton of buffs but what he can benefit from also is debuffs which is why in my opinion silver wolf is going to be another one of his best partners so you just give him the, the double Branya setup here because silver wolf lowers enemy defense and it doesn't matter if blade scales on attack or not because when the enemy's defense is lowered they're taking more damage from you same applies to pela if you are against enemies that are weak to ice you can use pela with blade and Branya here and get a lot more damage out of blade specifically because of Branya's damage bonus and because of the lowering of defense that you're gonna have now for the fourth character uh, i like to run a healer to be extra safe just because i, I like to make sure that he doesn't go too into the red and get one shot by an empowered ability. So I like to play Locha. And the benefit of Locha here is because I don't have E4 Blade, which I'll talk about in a minute, I'm basically always keeping Blade in the safe zone from KOs. And I'm also getting free procs of Locha's talent, which is going to make it so he can use his field more frequently because he's going to get more stacks on his Abyss Flower just from Blade eating his own HP and Locha's auto heal activating. So these two in combination, in my opinion, are very, very good. The other safety cushion you have, I don't have Bailu in this account, but the other safety cushion you have is Bailu. Bailu can revive Blade if Blade goes down. Now, something that I really like about Blade and I did want to mention is that you can actually play Blade with Fire Blazer. I didn't have a lot of footage of this, but I did test it out and I actually genuinely enjoyed using Fire Blazer with Blade. The thing is, Blade actually does have a fair bit of self-sustainability and as long as he's not constantly taking damage from enemies on top of the damage he's dealing already, and when I say constantly, I mean just like non-stop damage, right? This is actually pretty sustainable. Fire Blazer's shields are not super strong, but they are consistent and it's going to constantly mitigate the damage characters are taking and it's going to keep blade from getting too close to ko range in fact you will probably be able to clear whatever content you're in before blade gets close to death unless you're against some enemies that again just constantly are cleaving blade for tons of damage and i actually personally enjoyed using fire mc with blade when i did and if you don't want to run a healer you can always go japard uh japard is going to be a super solid pickup for blade and then whenever we get fushuan who's going to be our quantum preservation we have the potential for double win double quantum which is yet again more propaganda for silver wolf 
And lastly, another team that I like to use for some cases of Memory of Chaos is to run Welt. I mean, not only do you have a lot of imaginary and, and windbreak here, but something that you'll want to be aware of is that because Blade doesn't actually use too many skill points, he has skill point negative, but he doesn't use too many skill points compared to your other damage dealers. You can use other skill point heavy characters with him. He's only minus one skill point every three turns or so. And Welt is a character that can really benefit from using a skill basically every single turn. And because Welt actually can do quite a bit of damage, using him with Blade can be pretty dang helpful. And in general, a secondary DPS setup is possible with Blade. Now I'm still experimenting with this, uh, but you can also use QQ and Blade together, which is really funny to think about. But these two characters that don't need to eat up all of your skill points at a time can be played together and two damage dealers kind of makes up for missing one of the buffers for your hyper carry. So keep in mind, team crafting in this game is not a perfect science. There's not always one team that's just going to work for all content, especially when you get up to the harder ones. But Blade is a pretty flexible unit because he doesn't cost a ton of skill points to use. He can be played with most preservation and most abundance characters, and he allows you to keep your buffers on your hyper carry side with like someone like Zila, Yanqing, Dan Hung, Xu Shang, whoever it may be. Meanwhile, he'll just want those debuffers. So next up, let's go ahead and talk about Eidolons because I, I got some words to say. I, I got I got words to say. <laughs> it's so late, man. So I was writing out all of the Eidolon names and holy sh**, these are actually the edgiest names of all time. Blade's entire kit was written by Edgar Allan Poe during his scene phase. Just listen to this. Eidolon 1 is called Blade Cuts the Deepest in Hell. Like, I'm pretty sure they actually AI generated these titles referencing band names from Warp Tour 2014. Anyways, that Eidolon increases the scaling of his ultimate against one enemy. The damage jump on his ult is pretty significant, but because his damage is so solid already, you don't really need this Eidolon to make him work. In fact, most damage increases for him are kind of just whale bait. Eidolon 2 is called 10,000 Sorrows from One Broken Dream, and it gives Blade 15% more crit rate when he has his enhanced basic attack ready. Because his skill doesn't generate energy, and you won't actually overcap if you use it when he has his ult up, you can use it right before the ultimate to guarantee that you still have that crit rate bonus in the ult window as well. A3 is an ult and talent level increase. E4 is called rejected by death, infected with life. It makes Blade's max HP increase by 20% whenever he's below 50% max HP. So what this does is make him get more heals and HP restored from his own kit when he's below half, but it also increases damage that partially scales off max HP. For example, his ultimate. It's a decent Eidolon, but it does make running him with Locha a little bit riskier since Locha will probably heal him past the 50% mark and thus lose you damage. Eidolon 5 is skill and basic attack level up, and Eidolon 6 reduces the amount of charge stacks Blade needs to activate his talent follow-up attack to 4. It also increases the follow-up damage by 50% of Blade's max HP, making his follow-up stronger and more frequent. Now, Blade is a solid damage dealer already without many flaws, and his Eidolons basically just add more damage. Now, because of that, I actually don't recommend pulling for Eidolons here because he doesn't really need them in order to be good, and they selfishly benefit only him. But with that said, if you do want to spend a little bit more on Blade, I actually recommend going for his Light Cone. Though not every character can get the full Light Cone's effect or the full value out of the Light Cone, it's still an okay stat stick and it gives crit rate, which is hard to get on Destruction Light Cones. On top of that, that's going to be a huge increase in damage for Blade because there's not a ton of Light Cones that function on him as well as they function on other Destruction units. So if you're going to swipe on Blade, I personally recommend the Light Cone. But with that said, you can spend your money however you want. I don't really care. Sometimes I think about how funny it would be if I just like played into confirmation bias on like every single video. So I just go to Eidolons and everyone that's that's already pulling for Eidolons, I just go, yes, that is such a good decision that you just made. Congratulations. Pulling for Eidolons on a five-star character is such a good decision financially. You want to subscribe to my YouTube channel so bad. You want to hit the, the red subscribe button down below and like the video and comment your favorite Italian dish. This